All right then, uh, we're going to look at the epididymis, the hardest structure in the body to spell, and the vas deferens, which is also known as the ductus deferens. The reason we're going to do this is because a few weeks ago we looked at the testis, and these are the tubes that come from the testis. So for one, they're interesting because this is the path that spermatozoa take. Of course, the ductus deferens or the vas deferens is what you cut in a vasectomy as a, as a very effective form of sterilization. Um, and we've been looking at a lot of tubes in the body and we're quite getting used to the, the layers of epithelium, muscle and connective tissue. And by looking at the epididymis and looking at the vas deferens, we will look at two tubes that are doing quite different jobs and are organized quite differently from those same layers. You'll see, they look different because they do different things and we'll be, we'll, we're relating functional anatomy to the form that we see. Um, it'll be cool, honest, you'll see. So I have two slides and this shouldn't actually take too long. Um, the epididymis, so the testis is this nice ovoid structure and the testis is, uh, well, it's a very highly coiled tube and it's on one edge of the testis. So if you palpate the testis and you feel the ridge, that's the epididymis. Um, it's essentially a microscopic tube that's about six meters long. The functions are the spermatozoa, they leave the testis, they go into the epididymis at the top and then they spend a couple of weeks going down this very, very long tube and it's continued maturation of the spermatozoa. We'll talk about more of that as we go. And it's also a site for storing spermatozoa, which is very useful. Um, there is our section of epididymis. Um, and here is our section of vas deferens. Isn't it tiny? Now, of course, I don't actually know what animals these were taken from. Uh, and of course, the epididymis is a very coiled tube where the vas deferens is just a straight tube. It's bigger than that in humans. That's a diddy one. Maybe a rat or something. Okay. I wonder how bright I've got this. Um, this is the epididymis. So, do you understand what we're looking at here? Essentially, that's all one tube. It's just so wiggly that where we've cut a section through the epididymis, we're getting that tube as it goes down, it comes back up again, it goes down, it comes back up again, it goes around. And that's the same tube cut through many, many times. All right, so we only need to look at one bit of this and then we've, uh, we've looked at the tube. Uh, so you look, see that there, that's the tube, hasn't been cut through like that, it's been cut through at a glancing angle, an oblique section. Um, whereas some of these, like this one in the middle here, has been cut through very nicely. And we can see some you know, blood vessels and connective tissue and other bits of bobs holding all of this together. But uh, let's go, let's go in. What we can see in the middle of the tube there, there's something in the middle of the tube, I wonder what it is. That's all the spermatozoa. That's quite good actually because, um, you know, you read in the textbooks, uh, what's the function of the epididymis, uh, maturation of the spermatozoa? What does that actually mean? Um, before this point, the spermatozoa are put into a lot of fluid because that makes it easy to transport them through the seminiferous tubules and the other tiny tubes. But in the, in the epididymis, the, a lot of the fluid is removed. So by removing the fluid, the spermatozoa become more concentrated, right? Which is handy because, well, you know, the more concentrated the spermatozoa are, the higher the chances of fertilization occurring. Now, because we were moving the spermatozoa along with fluid before, when we concentrate them, it's harder to move the spermatozoa along. So one adaptation then is that the spermatozoa's flagellum becomes 
finished off so it can swim when it needs to. Um, we also see changes to the cell surface proteins, um, which will enable the spermatozoan to bind with the zona pellucida around the oocyte and trigger fertilization. Uh, when the spermatozoa are stored in here, uh, they are protected from oxidative stress. The DNA is compacted, so they're smaller. Um, yeah, lots of things like that. This is what we mean by the maturation of the spermatozoa. So we talk about the spermatozoa uh, as descending through the epididymis, through this single six meter long coiled tube. And most sources say that this takes a couple of weeks or those spermatozoa can be stored here for longer. If the spermatozoa are in storage and don't get used, they can get broken down and reabsorbed while they're in this tube. So what can you see here? Should we go to an even higher power? Um, oh, where am I there? I'm at the foot. Oh, it's my 20. just looks a, bit, looks a bit fuzzy. Usually looks quite good, my 20. By my 20, I mean I'm using my 20 times objective lens down there and then the 10 times magnification to my eyes, which is, means this is, this is a magnification of 200 times to my eyes, how much it's magnified for you. Um, will vary depending upon the size of your screen. So in the middle there, that's the lumen, and we can see the lumen is filled with spermatozoa. And then we can see a very nice epithelial layer. So what type of epithelium does that look like to you? Um, those cells are taller than they are wide. It's a columnar epithelium. Um, now it looks like it might be a simple columnar epithelium, but there is actually a second layer of cells around the outside. So the tall columnar cells are called the principal cells. They're the ones that are doing the work um, on the spermatozoa, doing those maturation changes or contributing to them. And then around the outside we have some basal cells, and the basal cells are the precursors uh, which will produce more principal cells. But um, the literature says that all of these cells are attached to the basement membrane, so actually it's a pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium, and it is also ciliated. We can see the cilia extending into the lumen there. Apparently those cilia are not motile, though. Those cilia are not moving things along. Um, let's have a look, see what others look like. But you can see we've got different planes of section. But otherwise, they all look the same, and like I say, this is all the same tube. Maybe we can see that, maybe that pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium is a little bit more clearly pseudo-stratified there. It's not a single layer of cells, it's a pseudo-stratified layer. Um, and then around the outside, we've got a very simple, I say simple, we've got a, a thin layer of smooth muscle wrapping around the epididymis. Um, And that's it. There we go. There's another nice section there. All can just about get it all in. So around the outside we've got um, a few layers of smooth muscle. Then we have that pseudostratified columnar epithelium with the principal cells and the basal cells. And then connective tissue between everything else, holding it all together with a few blood vessels and nerves and what have you. Da-da! Epididymis. Done. Um, okay. So, okay, let's do this. Pro let's do this properly. Those are the tubes of the epididymis. That is my four times objective lens. That's magnified forty times to my eyes. So that's the epididymis. Those are its jobs. You've seen the epithelium. You've seen the muscle layer. The cells are acting on the spermatozoa as they descend. The cells, the spermatozoa are maturing and being stored there. Compare that then to the vas deferens. It's the, it's so the vas deferens or the ductus deferens starts at the bottom. So the epididymis all the way down to the bottom and then the sperm leave and go into the ductus deferens, this tube here. Same layout, we've got epithelium, we've got smooth muscle, and we've got some connective tissue around the outside. But it looks completely different because it has a completely different job to do. Um, let's bump up to the 10 times 
objective lens there. Um, uh, and look, so there's the there's the epithelium inside there. We'll get to that in a moment, but the most obvious feature is all of this smooth muscle. Look at that. Um, so there's layers and layers and layers of smooth muscle. And I don't know if we can, we can see quite, we can see kind of fairly well there. There are actually three layers of smooth muscle here. So the layer, there's an inner longitudinal layer, then a middle circular layer, and then another outer longitudinal layer. And this is because of the function of the ductus deferens. The function of the ductus deferens is to propel those spermatozoa along during ejaculation. So this is peristalsis that's sending these spermatozoa along to meet with the secretions from the other glands of the male reproductive system. So the ductus deferens is going to meet with the duct of the seminal vesicles, and together they will then become the ejaculatory duct. So this thick muscle is there to propel the spermatozoa along during ejaculation. That's why this looks so different. But essentially it's that same thin layer of smooth muscle. Um, it's just now a thick layer. You can see quite nicely there. Can you see how the outer layer, the muscle's running along the length of the tube, so it's being cut across, and then that middle layer cells are running around so they've been cut more longitudinally and then that inner layer they've been cut across again right pretty good um okay let's bump up to my 20 times again um so look there's that very impressive smooth muscle you can see the different layers there just about and as we move into the middle then, we have some more connective tissue, which is not staining very well, supporting the pink epithelium. Now, it's not very clear what that epithelium is, but it is, again, it's still a pseudostratified columnar epithelium that is ciliated, but those cilia are not motile. And in the middle there, if there's anything in the middle, that will be the spermatozoa. Um, so we've looked at mucosa elsewhere in the body, which is um, an epithelium supported by connective tissue, a lamin appropriate, and that's what we're seeing there. Um, so epithelia is the, the red bit, and then the not very stainy bit is the lamin appropria, the connective tissue, and then we get into the muscle layer, and then the connective tissue around the outside holding it all together, and look, we see the odd, the odd blood vessel there. So, uh, and you can see that the epithelium is folded, so the lumen is a little bit smaller because during peristalsis, the pressure will then open up the ductus deferens ahead of it in the path. And yeah, squish it. So it, there's room for it to expand and then contract again. And we're looking at it there in a partially contracted state. Um, in humans, the, the, the vas deferens or the ductus deferens is about uh, two or three millimeters in diameter and is about 35 centimeters long. And that's it. Um, but I think it's very cool. It's kind of, um, it's this repetitive thing that I'm doing, right? Is we go around the body, we look at the histology of the body, uh, students worry about histology, that it's really complicated, but actually the body is very much about patterns. And we keep seeing these patterns throughout the body, and that's how the plan, this is how the, the body is laid down in the embryo, right? How something so complex forms from essentially uh, simple structures and simple ideas. But there you go. Two tubes, both carrying spermatozoa, both have different jobs to do. So we see how the smooth muscle and the epithelium are different because of those different jobs. Um, I do have uh, the sections of the glands of the male reproductive system. So those will be up next week or well, one of them will maybe both of them we'll see all right see you next week